I once had an opportunity to participate in a public speaking event as a keynote speaker, but there were a few keynote speakers. It was a corporate event in Silicon Valley, and the person who spoke before me used an analogy that I thought was really quite beautiful, but also inspiring. And he said that in life, there are life is like having two different types of games. One of those games is a game of chess, and one of those games is a jigsaw puzzle. And he said every player is participating in one of these games through life. But in chess, you only have two colors, white and black. But in a jigsaw puzzle, you have many different colors. You see the world I in the way of this game, but there are many different colors. They come of all shapes and sizes, and they have to fit together. In the game of chess, the two colors, white and black, the object of the game is to knock the opponent out of the game and advance yourself. In the game of a jigsaw puzzle, a game that includes pieces of all colors and hues and all different shapes, and the goal is to put them together. And the, the, the analogy that he was giving is that, what kind of person are you? Are you the kind of person that tries to put things together and work with the world as it exists, or are you the type of person that pursues a zero-sum game where you win, in order for you to win, somebody else has to lose? This is something that every justice-impacted person has to think about. Not only about how the system is operating, but how are you operating? The more you can understand different strategies and tactics and analysis that your opponent will use, the more you can start figuring out, okay, how am I going to respond to these challenges? I've learned at, that it's always better to live as a jigsaw puzzle and try to become one with society. Try to reconcile with society and to make amends. And it doesn't matter what stage of the journey you're in. You may be at the very beginning stage where you haven't even been charged. You may be uh, facing a sentencing hearing. You may be going into the system or coming out of the system. Regardless of what stage you're in, it's never too early and it's never too late to begin reassessing how am I going to get through this? What way am I going to work to make things better rather than living with this mindset of, uh, of, of, of destruction? Because that's really what can happen if you don't have a good plan. That was the plan that I had when I first got arrested. I didn't know how to think differently. And I made decisions that made life worse for me. Let me read the blurb from today's example, and then I'll relate back to this story. So today's example, I'm going to read the blurb about Michelle Alexander, who authored a book that brought more awareness to mass incarceration. In her book, The New Jim Crow, she wrote, strong coalitions are necessary to bring positive changes that topple injustice. Now, I'm not going to say it was an injustice that, that authorities brought me into the criminal justice system. I made bad decisions during the recklessness of youth. I sold cocaine. I faced a sentence. I didn't respond well to the charges against me because I was guilty. But instead of accepting responsibility and moving on and trying to make things right, I put the government to the task of taking me to trial and proving its case, even though I knew I was guilty. And as a result of the bad decisions I made at the start of the journey, a judge slammed me with a 45-year sentence. I don't hold anybody responsible for that sentence but me. But I will likely say I also don't hold anybody responsible for what happened after that the judge imposed that sentence than me. The responsibility would be mine to figure out a way to get through this journey at, by in the best way possible so that I could emerge successfully. That's the same with you. And that's why today's daily discussion is about building coalitions. Regardless of what stage in the journey you're in, think about how you can build coalitions that will make your life stronger and that will improve the outcome of your life. So let me turn to today's daily lesson, and then we will discuss it on the other side. So after a more than a quarter century inside, I learned to appreciate the power of building coalitions. 
That strategy brought me strength, helped me build confidence, and helped me respond to some of the challenges of confinement. It has also helped me to create business opportunities since my release. Anyone can use the strategy of building coalitions. Building an alliance is like building a team. If we want to tackle or overcome a problem, we have got to think about all the people who can help us. We need the right people in the correct positions. If we are responsible for architecting the coalition, we have got to create the tools to help our team members work toward the outcome we want. For example, I'll tell you the elaborate strategy I used to architect a transfer from a high security U.S. penitentiary to a medium security correctional institution. I provide details in earning freedom, but this thumbnail sketch may give insight you can use to engineer a coalition to help you. Early in my term, I set a goal of bringing mentors into my life. To launch that strategy, I thought about people that could teach me and help me build advocacy campaigns. People that worked in academia, I believed, might be more inclined to participate in my coalition. Bruce McPherson, a professor from Illinois, became one of my first mentors to come into my life. He visited me in the Atlanta prison a few times each year. We developed a friendship, and I wrote each week to apprise Bruce of the work, prize Bruce of the work that I was doing to prepare for success upon release. He helped me immensely, and he came to trust in me. After several years, I wanted to engineer a transfer from a high security prison to a medium security prison. I had to find a prison where I could make the most progress. I grew up in Seattle, but with so much time to serve, I wanted to transfer to a prison that would open the most opportunities to prepare for success. After launching an elaborate campaign to learn about the best prison for me, I chose McKean, Pennsylvania. Since the institution was outside of my region, a coalition to help me get the result I wanted could really advance possibilities for success. The incremental steps to build a coalition included earning academic credentials, using those academic credentials to build powerful coalition members and bring them onto my team, getting buy-in from the members of my coalition, persuading a coalition member to co-author an article with me for publication in a peer-reviewed journal, using that peer-reviewed journal to influence the appropriate member in the Bureau of Prisons central office, getting the right coalition member to facilitate the transfer to the medium security prison in Pennsylvania, getting the right coalition members to persuade the appropriate people in the Bureau of Prisons to authorize the transfer. In Earning Freedom, readers can get the entire story. They will see how building a coalition from prison opened many opportunities I could leverage to create higher levels of success. Here are some questions for you. What steps have you taken to build a coalition of support? Why would members of your coalition invest in your success? In what ways would you describe why you are a worthy candidate for more support? How will your coalition of support help you overcome the collateral consequences of imprisonment? And in what ways will you contribute to your coalition of support. And so the word of the day is topple. I'd like you to define topple. Use the word topple in a sentence. Now I'm asking you to think, think every day about what can you do to influence outcomes in your life. I would never ask anybody to do anything that I didn't do while going through 26 years in prison and since I have been do that I've been doing since I concluded my obligation to the Bureau of Prisons in August of 2013. I'm always striving to build support networks. I'm always striving to build relationships with different business entities that may help me achieve uh, the goals that I set for myself, such as getting into getting our courses into more jails and prisons. I'm always striving to build coalitions with administrators in jails and prisons. And that's not easy for any justice impacted person to do. 
In fact, it takes a lot of courage for a warden or a leader of a prison system to, to even believe in, in somebody with a criminal background like I had. I was a long-term prisoner. I did 26 years in prison. But I, 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 I'm able to overcome the challenges because I'm always building relationships with other people. And the people with whom I choose to build relationships are the kinds of people that can open opportunities and doors for me. That means I have to develop my own tools, tactics, and resources that will make it easier for them to believe in me. And that's the lesson I want to leave with you. If you're going through the criminal justice system, I want you to think about the coalitions that you can begin building today. That, should, that lesson applies to you if you haven't been charged yet, if you've just been charged, if you haven't been sentenced yet, if you've already been sentenced, if you're in prison, if you're on super All of these tactics of building coalitions can help you get a better outcome. And no one should fight for a higher level of liberty in your case than you. So if you are finding value in this and you're listening to these vo programs on iTunes or on YouTube, please subscribe to the Prison Professors channel and visit us at prisonprofessors.com. But if you are inside of a jail or a prison, my hopes are that you will use these daily discussion lessons that we offer as a roadmap that you could use regardless of where authorities hold you and start working to build coalitions. It will help you in such ways that you can't even imagine today, just as I couldn't imagine all the ways that coalitions would help me once I got out of prison. My name is Michael Santos. I'm the founder of Prison Professors, and I believe in you.